This is Morning Express on this 16th day of November 2015. And it's time for The Way It Is, where we look at some of the stories that have been making headlines here in the country, in the region, and world over. And look at it as The Way It Is. Remember, you're welcome to participate in this conversation. You can do that via Twitter, and the Twitter handle is at KTN News. We're going to be displaying it as we go along. Or you can also tweet me directly, and that's at Michael G. Gitonga. I'll go straight into introducing the panel that we have this morning to have our discussion and I'll start with my extreme left. We have uh, Sudi Wandabusi uh, who is a lawyer. Thank you for joining us. I hope you had a good Thank weekend. You. Sure. Everybody. Okay. Yeah. Next to him we have uh, Henry Miner who is uh, uh, in charge of Article 19. Good to have you sir. Thank you. Thank and uh, last but not least we have uh, lawyer Ambrose Weda. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Later on, we hopefully might be joined by Hassan Omar, the senator from Mombasa County, uh, who is running a little bit late, and uh, once he does that, we'll introduce him. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. And let me start with you, uh, Henry Miner, and this is in relation to the tragic news uh, of what happened in France on Friday. And of course, 120, more than 129 people are dead and uh, more than 350 injured, again bringing to the surface the fact that the war on terror is not a local thing, it is global. It is not France, it is not US, it is not Kenya. But let's start with, first of all, are there any lessons that we as Kenyans can pick from what happened and what we can do about it? But first of all, the lessons that we learn. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ditonga. I think um, one big lesson is that um, terrorism is an international uh, challenge to every country that um, seeks to be civilized and to follow rule of law because terrorists want to subvert all those known processes. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what lessons we might learn, I think one of the things I drew out of uh, the Paris attack was the reaction time of the security officers uh, to be told that uh, the French security agencies were able to manage um, that concert hall in less than half an hour mm -hmm. of the attack was, was for me quite exemplary uh, and, and that, that tells you that they minimized the fatalities because we could um, knowing that there were eight other <coughs> simultaneous attacks elsewhere uh, the fatalities could have been quite high uh, but the other lesson is that every society or every country that has, um, in a way, allowed inequalities, gross inequalities to exist, would have a soft underbelly for producing more terrorists. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think this is a big lesson. Knowing the inequalities in France tend to resemble the inequalities we have in this country. How, how would the inequalities uh, have brought in terror in this particular case? The situation uh, being that um, you have perhaps one radicalizing agent mm -hmm. who gets a group of people that are already disentangled and have nothing much to lose. So taking advantage of those who possibly have less and feel disadvantaged. Yes. Uh, and, and therefore, societies must understand to fight terrorism, the first perhaps feasible measure is to ensure we reduce inequalities and we make everybody as much as possible feel belonging because it is that sense of belonging in society that would help us root out the wrong elements but where people still think that they have not been catered for by the bigger society then there is a likelihood that they would perhaps be radicalized and where they are not ra radicalized they could just be complicit mm. when they see those challenges. Okay. On the Busi, maybe some of the lessons that you'd pick from uh, the terror attack in Paris. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I think the most important thing is, one, is tragic, but uh, two, like Maina has said, you'll only imagine with the, 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 the fatalities in, if it was in Kenya, the, considering how our security agents react. But uh, most importantly, again, uh, is that... Uh, it comes. It, it it goes to point that uh, to, to point out the fact that uh, perhaps it's time that the whole world join in this whole thing. We cannot afford to to stand to stand aside any country whatsoever. It is not. Uh, 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 it's only. It's not only for a country. It's for the whole world. It's a big lesson to us that uh, we have watched Al Qaeda grow. We've had uh, Al Shabaab in small, you know, you know, like ragtag teams and all that. But then recently we are seeing IS ISIS, and uh, it seems like uh, this is becoming one 
huge global movement which unless the world stands up to deal with it might actually consume us on the other side i may want to slightly differ with uh, what my friend says that uh, the, 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 the the question of uh, inequalities eh? because uh, i like to think that uh, terrorism has uh, taken more of a doctrinal uh, uh, approach it's not it's no longer an issue of uh, the poor coming out to be uh, but I guess his, his argument <coughs> is that the reason why they are able to radicalize mm. is when you have the poor disadvantaged, yeah. they are desperate. They will, yeah. and, and of course, one of the things we've realized, even with the terror that, uh, and especially the recruiting of young mm -hmm. fellows in mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. is that they use money and things to mm -hmm. entice. That does until you, re, you that's, that's until you, you, you find out how a number of terrorists actually have come from the UK. From, the, from, from Europe, countries in Europe, and how some of them have come in even with finance. <coughs> so really, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a big thing. Huh? It's, I, I only think it's easy to really simplify to the point of uh, saying it's, it's poverty that is driving people into, into terrorism. Okay. It's, it's more than that. It's gone beyond that. All right. All right, and um, let me come to you, Ambrose Weda, and maybe uh, pick your mind on what you think and we can learn from the terror attack in uh, um, Paris. I think the world should learn that uh, we are all human beings. Mm -hmm. And what hurts in one region mm -hmm. can hurt in another. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when we have the vices in the world, mm -hmm. we all need to be united against it. We have Ebola in Africa, hunger, terrorism, war in the Middle East, it all affects humanity as humanity, neither white, nor black, nor yellow, nor green. And terrorism has become one of our problems, although it has been reduced tremendously. Mm -hmm. I think the fight, the unity of the world should be to fight and eliminate terrorism. Looking at it in this country, I don't think people uh, would compare and say, oh, in Kenya, if our security agents were here, we would have done bad. Some of these people have not been in the line of fire. That's why they talk easily in the studios. But isn't it factual that uh, given the response time compared to what we've had, I mean, if we look at Westgate, we look at uh, the, the Garissa attack, if we just look at the response time, ours is considerably slow compared to what happened in Paris. You look at the dynamics, the number of us carries they have, the, the, the level of training, the level of equipment. You don't just compare like that. They're, they're highly a bit sophisticated. They're more well-funded. They have resources compared to this that we have here. Here we, we still have issues of uh, bulletproof uh, vests. Mm -hmm. You have to buy them, then they make them. So what would our issue be? Is it an issue of funding? Is it an issue that we've not prioritized it? Is it that we can't afford? It is an issue of we don't have the money. One day if the country can start internalizing the fact that a government collects a specific amount of money which is to be used for services then a few people along the way also steal part of it in, in corruption life then what remains is very little. Once we internalize that fact that is very little, uh, and, and therefore those who want to steal it also should be very hesitant <laughs> in doing it so that they, they don't reduce it further, so that when terrorists come we can respond the way uh, the French people responded. So I think if we internalize even in this country that we are human beings and what hurts you hurts me, what hurts a Kikuyu, hearts a duo and hearts a giriama. If we are able to internalize that and also to understand that money alone cannot protect you, wealth cannot protect you, our protection, our security lies in the hands of each other, then we will be able to combat terrorism. But if we think otherwise, they will come in and uh, we will be vulnerable. And, and this idea also of people thinking, give me this society, some people are richer, some people are poor, forget that I believe that you are what you want and you're supposed to become. People should forget and should come out of the idea of other people giving. People are supposed to come. You are supposed to give out. Become what you want. Okay, if you want to be an engineer, become. You don't say, make me an engineer. One might argue there, is, uh, there, there may not be those opportunities equally distributed. You create the opportunities. Mm -hmm. You create them. Okay. And uh, at this point, I'd like to bring in Hassan Omar Karibusana, mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, we're just looking at uh, the unfortunate incident and tragic uh, that happened in uh, Paris.
uh, France. And what lessons would you pick from that? And what can we glean out of that? And of course, the fact that this is no terrorism is a global war. Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, my condolences. Um, I think uh, uh, they, they, they struck at the very heart of Europe. And I saw a lot of um, sentiments in Kenya about the different, different ill treatment in terms of reaction. Uh, Facebook creating some kind of solidarity with France and stuff of that nature. But I, for me, I, my, my, my general view is just the fact that I don't express sympathy with you at a time of need doesn't mean I don't express sympathy with you when you are, when you are in need. So it's just because you're not good to me does not mean I'm not, I shouldn't be good to you. But I, I think I've been listening particularly to the international media and other, other areas where, where there is more, a, more, a better critique or a debate about this whole terrorism. First and foremost, uh, I did hear one of the leading uh, analysts, uh, I forgot his name, but in, um, in he, he comes on Al Jazeera quite often. You should also not go light, lighting fires in other people's countries indefinitely. <laughs> you know, you don't expect that there will be a fire in your neighbor's place constantly and that fire will not get to you. And particularly if constantly you are the one causing that fire. So even we need to take a, criti a, a critical look of these nations that keep bombing countries cause, quote unquote, in terms of ousting a dictator. Iraq is now far less stable, far more divided, with greater violence before the sex up war against Iraq, which was, which was created <coughs> by the Bush regime. Uh, look at what they did to Libya. Mm -hmm. Look at what they're doing in Syria. So I think this, the, you, you go lighting up fires and creating a, a, a sense of violence within, within people's homes. You know, we, without the strategy to say we are ousting a dictator, but that bombing its infrastructure, bombing its societies, creating a sense of hatred, so much so that there's a spillover. And therefore, uh, we do not condone terrorism. But we also should also stop state-sponsored terrorism in that regard where you constantly are bombing societies where, 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 and, and there's so much you know, collateral damage. People were talking about just the, the very a day or two earlier, there was bombing in Beirut. Mm. About, four, about almost 100 people lost their lives. Nobody ever took note of that. Yeah, and, and, and that bombing was also an ISIL uh, instigated bombing of Beirut where they bombed uh, the part of the, I think the Shia neighborhoods. Where because the Hezbollah was, uh, is taken to be part of those which is waging war against, um, against um, uh, ISIL within, in Syria. So I think what we need to do is to have a framework where also these countries learn how to restrain themselves. Look at what happened in Sham el-Sheikh, uh, the, the, the bombing of the aircraft. That, that, that bomb was planted in the airport right. and it blasted up a midstream killing hundreds of Russians and, 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 and passengers aboard. <laughs> Just when Russia had started a, a campaign of bombing in, uh, in, in Syria. So what, and, 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 uh, what, and in, 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 in Egypt for instance, you have a sense of instability. And one time you say there's the Arab revolution and Mursi was elected legitimately. He was ousted through murder of, of his own followerships mm. by, 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 by uh, Sisi. And you think it's okay. So what are you telling people uh, that democracy is no longer an avenue of, of, of expression? So what then will people take to? So there is now also this sense of instability in, in, in Egypt. Okay. So I think we, we, need to, we need to also measure our interventions in countries mm -hmm. to a point where we, you get a full scale, you know, we blow them up into full scale violence. Mm -hmm. And then there will be also a spillover time and again when you do this type of thing. All right. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Henry Miner, and uh, now looking at the local scene and the local terrain. Terror is something that has also troubled us for a while and unfortunately it seems that even when it happens we have uh, the government and we have the opposition. Whereas this is definitely not a war that can be fought single-handedly. Is it time for possibly on the local terrain the government and the opposition to stand united both by voice and deed in fighting terror? I, I think um, for the last acts of attacks, um, the country was highly united. Uh, you wouldn't say that there was a division between the opposition and the yes, ruling parties. Uh, right from, if you want to remember the Norfolk attack in early 70s to the 1998 uh, to the recent Westgate and, and Garissa attack. I think the political side showed a lot of magnanimity to say we might be different uh, on, on how we would have approached this. 
but for the time being we would unite the country towards that but that does not mean that questions ought not be asked Correct. after the event uh, i think that's where kenya gets it wrong because you already noticed that Pre president uh, holland has suspended his travel to turkey and some of the things he asked were the intelligence shared by americans and the brits to the french uh, security agencies why wasn't it acted upon mm. so somebody is already asking as we mourn in these three days i need clear accountability and answers this is perhaps our weaker point in the country that i remember president kenyatta saying we will leave no <coughs> stone unturned on westgate we're going to have clear investigation on this he then said oh we're not going to start a double process because parliament has instituted an investigation process you notice that the parliamentary uh, process went on they didn't adopt their very own report and and therefore we wasted resources on that accountability process because there isn't a document kenyans can learn from the president through the executive did not institute any clear process yeah. so we don't have a document to learn from uh, the same has happened with Garissa. We ended up perhaps following one officer who had had an opportunity to either ferry the daughter-in-law in the plane. That became the focus as opposed to these heinous murders of very many young people. Uh, and, and, and for me, that's where as a Kenyan, I say, yes, we need to hold each other's hands. But there's somebody else we've given a responsibility who we pay to try and review this. It's not all of us who can have the capacity to review it. And, and that's where the challenge is. The second thing, I agree with whether that perhaps it's about resources. But um, sometimes you want to ask yourself, this, within this period, we had Jubilee government tell us they have given the security agencies as much money as they requested for. Um, and, and of course, in the modest of what we can afford. As, as a country. So shouldn't there be changes in how things are happening? Can we continue crying that we didn't have enough money? That's why people didn't react in good time. Uh, and, and if you look at the per capita police ratio, uh, France and ours, France is not very high. Look at Belgium, which is now being said to be leading in terms of intelligence and some of the arrests of the would-be associates of, of, of attack in Paris, it, it has fewer police officers, uh, but they are effective. Okay. So sometimes it's not going to just be numbers, mm -hmm. that let's run to numbers when it suits us and say the UN says this ratio and we are falling below. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore those who are there are not effective. I think that's a big concern. Okay. Uh, and, and we need to ask ourselves, how do we hold each other accountable without unnecessarily creating an enmity because in Kenya I think there is a challenge that anybody who asks a question is then branded and patriotic all right uh, uh, I'm sorry you wanted to respond uh, to that uh, before uh, we move I think the resources are, uh, sorry resources here does not just mean money resources here mean uh, in fact uh, human resource is a bigger resource than money and that is where we are filling we have filled up let's say the police force with our cousins our uncles who are not able to get jobs elsewhere. And you see them, even when you see a, a typical policeman, they can't run from one point to the next without falling due to heat exhaustion because the body is unfit. And if your physical body is unfit, the mind is unfit. And you see them, I saw the retired, uh, I, my good example has always been the retired army general. If you put uh, that uh, William Ruto here, you put uh, His Excellency President Uru here, and you put uh, uh, retired Karangi here and you tell them 100 meters on your mask, get set, go, I'm sure Karangi will be last. That shows you the resource we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So we, apart from money, we would need as a country to develop that resource that can do the work. That is where we, lo uh, we, lo uh, we lose it. Yeah. That is where we stop our cousins. Mm -hmm. Who the, 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 at the sound of a gun? Now you've seen where the, 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 there's a shootout and there's a gunshot, and if the police officers were running away because of fear, in other words, the, the manpower has failed. 
that's, those are the problems I'm the talking about. Talking yes, about. Yes. Yes. All right, Wandabusi, in terms of follow-up, uh, we have come up with very many uh, resolutions as to how we can tackle terrorism. Mm -hmm. Have we followed up and done what we have said we should do? I think but that's the very point I wanted to say, that it has, do we ever learn? That's the biggest question, do we ever learn? You look at what happened at Westgate. We had a challenge with the, uh, I, I keep telling that we, we Kenyans have, uh, we, we have, we have developed that, uh, that, 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 that queer character of actually turning a, a such a serious situation, a tragic moment, into a scandal. Where honestly, you get cases, you get <coughs> of cases of soldiers who are supposed to come in and save a situation, there are allegations of them looting. And that, and that, that becomes the main that thing. That becomes the main thing. Mm -hmm. But that is sad because, again, it's never resolved. Then you look at how we reacted to that, and then later on we had the Garissa attack. And the same thing plays out. The reaction time was, 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 was again so disappointing. So the question is, yes, every after tragic uh, moment in this country, they will always either task force or some, 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 some serious statements being made about we need to do this and we need to do this. But when the same catastrophe strikes, we see we, the same, same scene plays out. Now the government is lethargic, the government was clueless, the information exists. The ex in fact, there's always a blame game between the different agencies. And that's where then uh, you realize that yes, we are united in grief, but questions must be asked. Questions must be asked as to what really happened. And it's not really a question of opposition or whatever. Actually, any right-thinking Kenyan then must be able to ask the question, what is the government doing about those policemen whom, as Ambrose puts it, cannot even run? Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think regarding that, we'll probably uh, have some security agents come in and see how we can follow that, that up. But let's but look but at something else that's but but also happening in the that political scene. In terms of the comprehensive strategy mm -hmm. for, for terrorism, Very briefly. <coughs> if you look at uh, the, 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 the Al-Shabaab strategy, even in Somalia itself, it has been taking manifestations of the ISIS strategy, mm -hmm. meaning that there is an importation closer home of, of this strategy. And then these allegations, of, uh, which, are, which are not allegations, all reports have indicated affirmatively that Kenyan defense forces have been in, involved in looting, in, in, uh, in uh, rape, in cases of violation of, of the local population, uh, you know, indiscriminate bombings in terms of targets. It has been involved in charcoal and, and sugar, uh, you know, uh, illegal trade. And I think it's important that we do not mutate ourselves into an occupation force that will create nationalist sentiment in Somalia that makes anybody then a recruit for Al-Shabaab. Because then you first come and win the hearts and minds and then you lose those hearts and minds and then everybody then mutates into nationalist uh, you know, a sentiment and then they all become recruits for Al-Shabaab. It's a very easy manifestation and, and that's what my, uh, my brother <coughs> is saying. You need to learn, you need to have a comprehensive strategy. As far as, as, far as it's coming up, it's, it's, it's a broader incapacity of the Uhuru government to deal with many areas from it, be it uh, corruption, be it good governance, be it economy, be it security. I think it's, it's a general lack of, of competence. And I think it's, it requires a leadership that, that, that gives value to those who know. You know, in the Quran they say we, we are set apart. Are they equal those who know and those who know not? So you need to bring uh, experts. You don't need to continue to rely on Jay Muturi and a few of your friends who you are with in the office of the pre or in the deputy in the office of the prime minister. You need to bring to inject new and fresh ideas to combat uh, this evolving and sophisticating threat. All right, let's look at something else and uh, come back to Kenya on the political scene. And uh, Embro Sweda, uh, the former president Mwai uh, Kibaki came out over the weekend to <laughs> say that there should be dialogue between uh, the president. He should listen to yes. what the opposition is saying. Is it time for government to literally have this roundtable talk with the opposition, which uh, the opposition, of course, has maintained they have not done so far? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, listening here, the opposition at times, they talk sense, sometimes they make a lot of noise. But what some of the things they say, you do not need a round table talk. You just need to pick it. When your enemy, some the enemy here in, in quotes, shouts insults at you, sometimes it is uh, good to listen to the insult because the insult contain an element of truth. Because uh, it is truth that hurts. Uh, 
they have made noise, a lot of noise about corruption. And I valid think noise or not valid? It is valid. I said here last uh, Monday mm -hmm. that there's so much debris about corruption mm -hmm. that there must be fire somewhere because the smoke is too much. Okay. And, and then you look at it, um, you, you hear millions are lost here, millions are lost there, some ministers are out, some ministers are in, and, 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 and we seem to be showing double standards. Some ministers uh, like um, Kosge out, uh, this one in. So those double standards are sending wrong signals. And then there is no harm in looking into the allegations to clear people whether this is honest, whether this is not honest. So in terms of corruption, I think our government and my president should listen and we look. Listen to the opposition, you mean? Listen to the opposition and the people of Kenya and say what we are talking about in terms of corruption, there could be something. This thing of holier than those and people saying they are cleaner, they can't step aside, I think it is wrong. It is yeah. very wrong. If I was the president today, I would easily have dissolved cabinet. You then, you then have to prove yourself back. You, you, you have to pass through a chamber, radioactive chamber, where we check. If you have swallowed something, no, you will be very far from the cabinet. Oh, Andabusi, your comments on uh, the former president's uh, uh, sentiment that uh, Uhuru must listen to. I think enemies in quotes. I think Mike, it's very legitimate. It's very important that uh, a, I'm very sure that uh, even deep down uh, the president's heart, he knows very well that things are not okay. Uh, going by uh, what has the, what the turn the country has taken, it is serious and uh, there's need to really dialogue. And then again, you know, uh, in fact, just like uh, Ambrose using the word enemy, really, I think let's use the word opponent. We need to use, you know, it's or not, yeah, he's not always, he's not, he's, yeah, he's not, 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 and you're, you're right, yeah. The point is that uh, we shouldn't make it so, so serious, because at the end of the day, the opposition largely involves, of, involves legislators, who are in parliament and they are an arm of government mm. <coughs> and uh, if there's it, probably if there's a question of what, what structure to, to take then let's take the structure of let's engage this arm of government and let it be inclusive with looking at, gov at, 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 at parliament as parliament let us have a, a scenario where Kenya looks at this whole corruption issue as a country and not as the government side and the opposition side because uh, Honestly, I've always argued and still keep arguing that perhaps we really need to look at this as a society, Kenya as a society. Mm -hmm. And perhaps the only characteristic that, uh, uh, that characterizes Kenya as a nation state is corruption. It's becoming rampant. It's becoming almost acceptable, which is sad. Mm -hmm. Because the question that comes right now is, what is the greatest punishment ever in this country? If any. For, if any, for the for person who has been uh, 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 involved in corruption. Mm -hmm. One, stepping aside. Stepping aside does not, never means even sucking. Two, is uh, some, 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 uh, some uh, uh, bashing on social media and the political rallies. Then it ends there. Billions have gone, no recovery, nothing else. All right. Henry Miner. I think we, we, we are in tragic moment and reflection is, is required. I think what um, the retired president was in telling us is that we have chosen deliberative democracy as a way of governance. And, and we can't appropriate that aspect or approach of governance and not dialogue with each other. It, it begins to be simplistic because on approach we say we are democracy and a democracy means you listen you ask who are your constituents uh, and whether opposition or ruling party we are Kenyans so the tag for purposes of competitive politics allows people to join different parties but in reality we are one <coughs> we are Kenyans and, and, and therefore there is need to listen to everyone and, and my take is to ask the ruling uh, coalition to go back to their um, oath when they were taking office to say we will be the president of Kenya. 
whether you voted for us or not. Which means you will listen to Kenyans. You will not listen to a few advisors. You will not listen to a few people you think uh, uh, promote you. Because sometimes those people they think are promoting you are purely leeches that are wiping the country's moral fabric. They are too corrupt, but they can't they keep telling you that if you did away with them, the country will collapse. But it's collapsing because of their corruption. So I, I think that, that's a critical component. Structures, yes, uh, within Parliament, uh, within uh, the National Assembly, uh, the Senate, and within perhaps trying to bring together the county assemblies. Let's, let's find structures that can help us dialogue because corruption runs through all structures. Mm -hmm. And let's ask ourselves, how do we min minimize, if not eliminate, this uh, pilferage? Uh, then how do we allocate resources properly where they are needed? Uh, my colleague here was talking about uh, terrorism not being a factor of poverty. I talked about inequality, and, and inequality in Kenya is rising. So we might continue burying our heads in the sand. And, and like Ambrose says, you just need to fight. There are people who fight from his village, but at best they don't go to school because the bursaries that exist have not reached them. Not because they don't try, but because the bursary is being allocated on political patronage system. So the, you never get to know that there are these deserving young people who are pushing their way. They, they just don't want to be uh, terrorists. They just don't want to be thugs. But the system is clogged with patronage. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if they do not carry rungus in support of weather, then in their family, nobody gets bursaries. And that patronage is something we need to break. That is what we need to listen to. <coughs> so if that is what would be called noise for purposes of classification, then let it be noise, but understand that there is constructive noise mm -hmm. that is out there that we ought to listen to. All right, to. let me come to Hassan Omar and in regards to the pres yes, former come president's uh, comments. And given uh, that uh, Okoa Kenya bill is already, you know, the wheels are rolling with the 1.5 million signatures already tabled, is it too little too late for that dialogue or is it time for uh, just Kenyans to vote with a referendum? Uh, first and foremost, uh, one of the greatest strengths of the former president was his strength to listen. This particular president and well, some, former, some former, former was president. Just quiet. Yeah, but he was listening. He was <laughs> listening. Mm -hmm. If we talk to ministers of the yesteryears, James Orengo, even those in the opposition who now are in the opposition who are part of the coalition and belong to the, the ODM side of the coalition, yeah. will tell you he will have thorough, uh, the, uh, constant meetings with his with his ministers, have a the very big discussion, agree on certain things, guide you on others. Um, so what, has hap what is emerging? The strength of, um, of uh, the fourth president is that of the second president, the strength to just talk uh, in every fora. Uh, you know, and when you hear somebody calling legitimate opposition um, interventions, noise, uh, or calls newspapers, rappers for papers, it tells you the democratic maturity of that particular leader or that particular coalition. Now, you know, these, were, these are the same things. When we, during Moi's time, these used to be called opposition struggles. During Kibaki's time, it used to be called opposition. They, they call it noise because this noise now has manifested itself into truth. And what Kibaki was simply telling them, had you listened, had you listened, that is the more appropriate thing. So when you are being told, to question, when you are being told that there is corruption, you should have listened. When you are being told that to stop the overspending and the over overborrowing, you should have listened. You, when they called for dialogue, probably you should have sat down and listened. And did you hear the contemptuous way the president put it over the weekend? Oh, come but without your insults. Listen, right now you're thinking, my brother, you need us, we don't need you. Yeah, it, it's evident everywhere across the board. That 33% uh, support that is left, I kept, I've kept deliberately saying, Uhuru and Ruto, the president and deputy, are not competitive because of the strength of the ideas, because of the outpour of, you know, cutting edge, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, developmental agendas. It's because they, they <coughs> fall back onto a community that they know they will eventually instill fear so that they can drive them politically in the basis that, that they, they, will, they will rally their communities behind themselves. But if it was strictly agenda, you, you have to be totally out of your mind to continue believing that Jubilee is doing well. You know, it, or you must be a beneficiary somewhere or an ethnic lord in another place. So I, I think it is, it is, just, it is just obvious. It, it is obvious to the common eye. It is obvious to everybody that the country is not running the way it should be running 
we are extremely polarized. We are extremely, we, we are extremely, you know, in a, in a state of, uh, you know, almost economic, you know, crisis. We, all sectors are, are on the decline. If it is not a legation against a small little department somewhere, it is about the KDF. Nobody is spared the, the, whim, the rims of corruption. We are telling the president to, to crack down on it. My own view that about his reluctance to crack down on it is means maybe he's partly or maybe, uh, you know, complicit to it because could be also telling you a message. Mm -hmm. You know, over, over, overpriced, uh, you know, developmental projects. So it's all, it's now, it's the chicken coming home to roost. Okay. Uh, it, uh, no doubt. Ambrose Soda, you seem to disagree <laughs> with no, the no, Senator. The thing of each time, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a small problem. Uh, they think the government is sinking. We are getting this small problem. No, no. Because Please. this is what is happening, a small there problem. There are issues, there are problems here, and there are especially corruption. It's a small uh, problem. Uh, it is a small problem. Corru corruption has been there and uh, it should be. Many. It has only Can gone you extra. Really say it's a small problem, <laughs> Ambrose, whether given the magnitude of the amount of money that has been lost uh, so far. The allegation is an allegation. Let's not move, move 791 that. million weather. Can you people and listen? Small and can can I, th that's now where the president says noise because you don't allow us also to express yeah, but what I'm saying. It's small, it's corruption small. has been there. It has graduated. And that graduation is now shaking the country. And that graduation, we deal with the graduated element. The president needs to be deal with the graduated element fast. Then he goes to the deep-rooted aspects of it, which will take long term. So, uh, as a result, we have had uh, yeah, a few problems here and there. But there are not such problems as to bring a government down and to bring court into power and to bring a president. That is the wrong side of it, and also sending panic into the country, uh, so that people, some people hope they are getting to power tomorrow, others think panic, we are finished. There are few steps we didn't get right that led to the shilling going down. <laughs> Corruption has uh, escalated. Some people have been shielded from scrutiny. But all these are things which uh, the president will come out and reorganize and we go back to growth. So this is what the opposition should talk about, not coming into power tomorrow. And then they, 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 when it is good for them, they say, look, you won these elections through your tribe. When it is good for them, they say you rigged yourself through the Supreme Court. Both. This double talk is what is causing confusion also in this country. You, Let you us rig, focus on the problems we have. Corruption, uh, uh, mismanagement, I say the man at the Treasury did not look at the ceiling properly and a few aspects of economics, and we got it wrong. Okay. We must get these things right fast. Then we move on as a country. All right, let's talk solutions, and I'll come to you, uh, Wanda Busi, and get your comments. Uh, but we do remember the president at one time making it very clear, even in his own office, there is corruption and he said we will see results yeah. uh, we remember during the opening and the launch of the huduma centers again he said that things are going to be done yesterday in regards to the nys he also made comments and i'd like us to just uh, play that back because that's very recent just as a reminder and i'd like to and, and he has come out also to uh, give uh, somewhat a solution and he came out with uh, uh, the executive and uh, you know those from the private sector from the eacc from the media are uh, coming up with a, you know, a conglomeration of people to deal with corruption. But first of all, what he had to say before I hear what you have to say in regards to solutions. Uh, the issue of NYS, as you have correctly stated, we are going through some issues, but I am totally committed to that program, and I want to assure you that once we go over these hurdles, that program will be back and we shall remain on course because we believe it is a program that has really helped us assist many, many young men and women in this country. So I want to assure you that the savings are safe and that we shall continue with this program as we get over the hurdles that we have. So, another promise there from the President that uh, we're just going through a few issues which we're going to deal with. Yeah, uh, almost you could even see the echo from Ambrose. <laughs> and the president, huh? <laughs> I think we have a tendency of using the word uh, few problems, and uh, I think that is where the whole <laughs> problem is that uh, we seem to <coughs> simplify very serious issues in this country, and uh, we fall into the normal business of lip service. Uh, actually, and I will stand to be vindicated that particular inter so called interagency organization uh, whatever group they have made for tackling corruption is another form of corruption 
Okay. I'm going to come out very clearly. Why? Because those fellows have been handpicked by the government. And they're going to really do the same, same thing. Go round and round and round and round, draw allowance. So you have no confidence whatsoever in this group that is coming together? Oops, to I wish I had. Mm -hmm. I really wish I had. It is a serious thing. Uh, again, uh, this, 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 this song about laws, nothing. There's nothing. I know the proposal is going to be that, oh, we need to amend this particular law and this particular law. There's nothing about law. The laws we have in this country are perfect. What we lack is political will. And political will must start from the president. But it cannot start from the president when you start forming interagency uh, groups to tackle corruption, yet you, the very serious, the core of it, the core of your government is in trouble when you are applying double standards on the issue of corruption unless you stop it we will not going to we're not going to move anywhere mm -hmm. we are not going to all right henry minor the inter inter agency groups that the president is proposing i haven't seen what their tors are but um i want to remember remind kenyans that the president picked another task force um headed by the ag immediately he shared the list of 175 to parliament and said, here is another approach I want this group to harmonize any loopholes. We haven't heard on what they have done so far. So <coughs> I wouldn't give it a benefit uh, of doubt uh, as, as it is now. I would, I would say there are two or three things uh, the president ought to do. One is to quickly uh, enable the process of recruiting the commissioners for the uh, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission which he knows very well he haunted out the other people yet that is the only constitutional mandated body to do this so we have Alake and his deputy who also are equally tainted but don't even have commissioners so let's focus in strengthening the institutions yes. that exist that already than creating ad hoc mm -hmm. parallel processes that are just going to be a smoke screen that's number one. Number two the president with a majority in parliament should seek to open a provision in the public officers ethics act which makes a scrutiny of declaration of assets and liabilities at, uh, by a third party criminalized let's push everybody who is in public office to make public declarations on their wealth and let kenyans say is this true this is what henry owns because we know he owns this this and that that's the first way we would begin to hold each other accountable because there is too much accumulation of wealth by people who the other day owned nothing or were nearly being declared bankrupt but today they are becoming multi-billionaires and we are saying so long as they pushed a receipt here and there uh, it is okay in our uh, account so that's number two the third thing is a discussion that began i think on trying just to ensure that the country uh, lives within its means um, our salaries and uh, the people we are employing are necessary. One of the things the president could do is to ask himself, he has a bloated team of advisors. Are they really helpful after two and a half years? I think this is a time to say midterm, have these people served me well? If every other sector I'm touching on is going wrong, do I still need to be keeping all these people as advisors? And, and the same to everybody who is holding a different office. I think it's a time for us to think through uh, and, and ask ourselves, we must do things differently. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, um, whether talks about graduation in, 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 in corruption, it's mega political corruption that we are seeing today. Mega. Uh, in in Moyes' time, you could struggle with one scandal. Now they are, they are, they are numerous. Remember, we haven't resolved the Moi ones. So <coughs> if we haven't resolved the Moi ones, we haven't resolved uh, Anglo leasing during Kibaki's time, when you add on all this, the reality is the country can easily sink. And the country sinking is not that the opposition is, are wolves just hanging in there to take power over skunk. I think the opposition is equally interested in a better country. So minimizing the issues and saying it's a few i think the president says a few things in in nys and and my question is to kenyans is 791 million a small, small thing, thing. 
you know, know, and, and my answer and is and 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 let, let, let Ambrose first of all answer that mm -hmm. because he said there are a few issues and uh, secondly yes. in terms of why do we need another agency to deal with corruption when we already have some that are constitutionally based. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> I think uh, when it comes to all these multi-agencies uh, I think there we, we got it wrong. We <laughs> The thing is if there is corruption of 719 million, as you people allege, then we investigate. And uh, this thing, 719 million, is, is, is not money you can put in your pocket and disappear through the security lines. So you can trace it yeah. and fear the people involved, and uh, you then escort them to court one. And then you get a magistrate who. Uh, has no appetite for money because with the seven with the seven hundred million you can go uh, through any court and come out. You get somebody who does not care about money, and then uh, you try these people very quickly, the, um, the two months. And once a few people cool their heels in jail, other people there will be a lesson. It's not a question of this agency, that agency, that agency. I think um, when it comes to corruption. We are going to sink our country and exactly. let, <coughs> let us change. I, I will give you an experience. Where I sit as chairman of Sony, the thing that you don't run short of, our offers of big money, we we'll give you three million, five million here, uh, two million here. You tell them, eh, so it is that easy. The, the only making money is that. Easy. No wonder we are all fighting to to be chairman and executive base and executive. Couldn't there is so much money? Yet. You look at it and uh, you say, God, this country will sink if we continue like this. And I would like my president, it is time for us, <laughs> with these things going on, for us to jail a few people. Actually, if you jail whether here, there, jail Omar there, jail one governor there, jail... Uh, people will stop. And I, I think our, our cabinet now is time for them to uh, be reconstituted. All right, Senator. You know, I wanted to tell... Uh, you know, there's a strong opposition internally within, within Jubilee about <coughs> this pleasure in the management. And I remember when that committee was formed, I was having lunch with a friend from the Jubilee Coalition and he told me of a story of a four-year-old. His, his uncle kept telling him, you know, four-year-olds, uh, young people, uh, toddlers, are extremely trusting. So he was saying, he was putting himself in that situation. That is, uh, there's an uncle kept telling the toddler, he like to talk Ndakuletea ice cream leo, ndakuletea bicycle kesho, and none of it came. One day, when the uncle said, I'll bring you something, the, the kid told him, wrongo. <laughs> you know, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, the, they say, some of them, they have that faith right now. When they ever look, listen even to the president and everybody, they don't just believe him anymore. And the public credibility is what takes political dispensations forward. You lose credibility, even in every writing in politics. They say public credibility is your, is your most principal weapon. Mm -hmm. You lose public credibility, whatever else that you do, uh, you will not, it will not happen. And then the same guy told me one thing, which I think the likes of Weather need to now start to internalize. Tell the king when he's naked. Okay. He is so naked. He, you know, you're telling him, don't worry, just patchwork here and there. You have, your suit is looking very, very okay. You know, you are so, and everybody else is seeing the reality. You know, I, I have a, a group of friends. Mm -hmm. I told them, if I fail, you, you, you will be the ones who failed me. Mm -hmm. I tell them, tell me, as, when, it when, as it is. That's why sometimes you see me aligning my strategies even in Mombasa. I, I, I speak things differently because they tell me, they tell you the real thing. Yeah, so the president needed to have, have a small caucus which tells him the real things outside where does and the rest of them. Where, whereas when rubber hits the road, what is it that we need to do? What is required by Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta is not patchwork. It is overhaul. And anything he does now, henceforth, will be looked at as politics. Mm -hmm. I saw Ahmed Nasser made a tweet telling him, bro, effectively campaigns start on 1st of January 2016 for, for, that, for the big city in 2017. If you do not reorganize things now in the next two months, anything that you do in 2016, politicians will tell you, what was in next year? You know, when you're in 2015, 2017, it still looks fairly far, mm. even on, in December. But when you do it, much later than that. So I think we, this, anti, and finally, is to agree with, um, with um, Minor. Minor Henry. The President Kenyatta has weakened literally every democratic institution. Most of the laws they are amending to weaken further ESCC Act, 
um, the, the Auditor General's Act, National Police Service, were laws that were recent during Kibaki's tenure during the transition to the new constitution. They are eroding them by the day. So you weaken the police service, you patronize it, you politicize it, you weaken the, the ESCC, you create a, 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 you know, a group of people who really are running out of scale, are looking for a area with simply a bounced check uh, rather than the mega corruption. And then you expect us, after okay. weakening all democratic institutions, to have faith in a small committee that you have formed. All right. Uh, we need to wind up. Your closing comments, uh, Wanda Busi, in regards to the way forward. How do we deal with corruption in this country? Like very I said, briefly, very briefly. to me, I think uh, the most important thing is that we can only start with the man at the helm. The president needs to lead the way. Because corruption in this country is entrenched. It is entrenched. If it is not, there is no arm of government now that can stand and say that this is the only arm of government that is free. Corruption. It has, it's becoming normalized. So unless the president starts with one, the political will. Two, even as Maina mentioned that we need to, 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 to have the commissioners appointed and all that, those commissioners ought to have, one, the capability and the will to really act on corruption. Because what happens is, if you get in a strong ESCC in this country, the people who bring it down is parliament. Because parliament is also corrupt. So when you touch them, they start throwing you up. That's true. So will is very important and we actually the only person who will save this country will be one individual sitting on that seat of the president and saying no, enough is enough. Henry, do you agree that the president literally is the one to save us from this wanton corruption? He single-handedly. He will lead the way but single-handedly he wouldn't deliver. That's why he needs a proper cabinet um, and, and a proper group of advisors. Uh, as it is now, I would looking at the things that are going wrong i don't think that uh, the group of cabinet and the group of advisors are doing kenya a great service but i would want to add on what sudi is indicating that we need the speaker of the national assembly and the speaker of the senate to equally raise their standards uh, their ethical concerns within parliament and and to the extent that parliamentarians still are merchants doing tenders all over the place and, and getting away with certain processes, that is a challenge. The CJ, as he goes out, I think, must also rise beyond being a person who is lamenting. He needs to crack the whip and put into place sufficient processes that can hold the judiciary accountable. So Kenyatta can do as much with the executive, but the other heads must do it, get it right. But the institutions that have been created by the Constitution to fight corruption must be strengthened. The last thing I hadn't talked about, I think we need a framework uh, with, with which we will assess uh, the effectiveness of decisions by the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions. All right. uh, so that it's not politicized. Mm -hmm. We are able to read when these cases are sent to him. This is the threshold within which All right. he makes those decisions. Gentlemen, we'll have to wind it right, right there. Time is up. So thank you very much for joining us. Embro Sweda, who is a lawyer. Uh, Henry Minor, Article 19. Sudiwa Nabusi, who is a lawyer. And last but not least, Senator Hassan Omar, Mombasa County Senator. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And that's where we wind up Morning Express this morning. And that's the way it is.